And don't forget to order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths, an excellent book that you can find on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books available in both PDF as well as paperback form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook, bring you our 2014 NFL team preview for the Indianapolis Colts. We're going to take a look at their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams. But first, let's start off on the offensive side of the football, starting with the quarterback position. The quarterback position is definitely in good hands for a very long time with Andrew Luck. The third-year QB has gotten better each and every season and is a dual-threat player that puts a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. The question is about the backup job, whether or not they keep two or three quarterbacks. If it's two, then it's going to be Matt Hasselbeck. If it's three, it's going to be Chandler Harnish, whom I think can really ball. Now, Luck has proven to be durable, so more than likely, they won't see the field. Getting Vic Ballard back into the fold helps alleviate the loss of Donald Brown, who was the leading rusher last year with 537 yards. Ballard showed promise as a rookie back in 2012, and he'll compete with former 2012 first-round pick Trent Richardson for the bulk of the carries. While you can't improve vision for a running back, you can improve patience. And if Richardson can become a much more patient runner, he'll start to show significant growth as a player. You never know about the health of Ahmad Bradshaw, so I'd keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Zerlon Tipton out of Central Michigan to make a case along with speedster Chris Rainey for the third running back job. This is an area of the team where the Colts are dangerous. They get back future Hall of Famer Reggie Wayne, who went down in Week 7 with an ACL injury, and third-year player T.Y. Hilton made the most of his opportunity and the added responsibility by becoming the leading receiver on the team with 82 receptions for over 1,000 yards. The staff finally were able to put Derrick Rogers in the lineup, and he started to pay dividends by catching two touchdowns and had a couple of big receptions in a playoff game versus Kansas City. In free agency, the Colts continue to stockpile talent around Andrew Luck by signing Hakeem Knicks from the New York Giants, who comes over after 4,600 yards receiving and 27 touchdowns in his five years with Big Blue. And his signing gives the Colts two legit number one wide receivers. Also in the draft, they added Dante Moncrief out of Ole Miss, who's a big wide receiver with a great run after the catch skills. And I would also look out for undrafted rookie free agent Eric Thomas out of Troy, who had a prolific career down in the Sun Belt Conference. At tight end, the Colts also boast impressive talent with Dwayne Allen and Kobe Fleener. Allen is the better of the two and returns from injury, while Fleener was inconsistent but started to come on strong as the season progressed to become the second leading receiver on the squad. Wesley Saunders is the blocking tight end, and H-back Jack Doyle provides quality depth. This is by far the best group of receivers and tight ends in the division. Contrary to popular belief, the Colts' offensive line performed well in pass protection. Now, where they struggled was in a running game, and a lot of that had to do with the injuries that they suffered across the board. Depth still remains a question here, but when you look at starters Anthony Costanzo and Gosher Charles, you see two solid bookends at tackle. 2013 free agent signee Donald Thomas was lost after two games because of injury, and now he'll have to compete with second-round pick Jack Muhort out of Ohio State, who played left tackle in college, but will move down inside for the Colts. Last year's third-round pick Hugh Thornton had normal ups and downs as a rookie, but showed enough progress that you feel comfortable that he's moving in the right direction. Center is a lone question mark up front for the Colts. You look at Khalid Holmes, he played sparingly as a rookie, and now he's in charge of the most important position on that offensive line. Lance Lewis and Xavier Nixon provide versatile depth up front for Indianapolis. I like what the Colts have on the defensive line at nose tackle. Josh Chapman should have a breakout season now that he's two years removed from a knee injury he suffered in college. He played well last year. Defensive ends Corey Redding and Ricky Jean-Francois did an admirable job, and Redding's length makes him a challenge for opposing offensive tackles. The Colts brought in Arthur Jones from the Baltimore Ravens to compete for the starting job opposite of Redding. At worst, he provides great depth up front. Young players in Monterey Hughes and Jarris Pendleton are expected to be worked into the rotation, but undrafted rookie free agent Zach Kerr out of Delaware looks to be a steal. At 6'2", 330 pounds, Kerr can play the nose, the shade, the one, the three, or the five technique, putting him in the mix to see a lot of time as a rookie.
Outside linebacker Robert Mathis led the team in sacks last year with 19 and a half, but he'll miss the first four games this year with suspension. That leaves the door open for second-year player Beyond Warner out of Florida State to garner more playing time, which could ultimately be a positive thing until Mathis returns. At the other outside linebacker spot, Eric Walden is listed as a starter after finishing last year with 58 tackles. He'll be pushed by rookie fifth-round pick Jonathan Newsom out of Ball State, who excelled as a pass rusher in college. On the inside, Jarrell Freeman played some great ball last year, leading the team in tackles with 169 and second on the team in sacks with five and a half. They added Dequell Jackson from the Cleveland Browns in free agency, who is equally as effective versus the run. Rookie six-round pick Andrew Jackson out of Western Kentucky plays well on both ends of defense and is a very effective blitzer. I'd look out for him to see quality minutes this year. Another intriguing player is free agent signee Hanak Mwamba, who was a former first overall pick in the CFL draft a couple of seasons ago. He excelled with the Blue Bombers last year after making his mark on special teams as a rookie. He'll have to do the same to stick, but is extremely talented and athletically gifted. The Colts secondary is steady to solid, but not spectacular. I will say this, however, I do like the cornerback position more so than safety. Both Vontae Davis and Greg Toller make a solid duo, and if Toller can stay healthy, he could really elevate this group. Nickelback Darius Butler can play inside or out and start if need be, and he led the team in interceptions last year with four. I also like the progression of Sheldon Price from his UCLA days to what we saw last year in the preseason. He also has a chance to log more playing time this year for the Colts. Josh Gordy is good depth to have, but I'd keep an eye on undrafted rookie free agent Kwai Cox out of Jackson State, who's an ideal slot guy with big-time game. Losing Antoine Bethea hurts at safety, and that would have put Sergio Brown and Delano Howell in a battle for the starting spot, but the club signed free agent Mike Adams from the Denver Broncos to go alongside Leron Landry. The closer Landry is to the line of scrimmage, the better, and in my opinion, the safety position is still a question mark entering the season. The kicking game is strong for the Colts with Adam Vinatieri, who at 41 still has a strong leg going four out of six from 50 yards plus. And punter Pat McAfee, who averaged 46 yards a punt, downing 27 of them inside the 20. The return game is a slight question mark. There are a wealth of options here available for the Colts. Griff Whalen, Chris Rainey, even T.Y. Hilton, if need be, or it could be undrafted rookie free agent Luchez Purifoy or rookie draft pick Dante Moncrief. I don't think they can go wrong with any combination of these options. This is a well-balanced football team on both sides of the ball. They've gotten better every year and on the cusp of breaking through. The optimism is that this could be the year that they finally do it. The cause for concern would be the running game and the safety position. In my opinion, the latter isn't as crucial as the former. The running game, whomever's going to be the lead guy, has to raise the level of production so this offense can really flourish. The road to the Super Bowl for the Colts goes as follows. Number one, the run game balances out the offense and makes this offense one of the best in the National Football League. And the defense has to continue its opportunistic play. They do a great job of causing turnovers. And if they can do that, again, they get the ball back to that explosive offense. They have to tighten up versus the run. That's the one element of the defense that struggled mightily last year. They couldn't stop the run, giving up over 125 yards a game. If the Colts can do all of these three things, I think they have a great chance of making a deep run in the playoffs. I have the Colts finishing first in the AFC South. This is a very good and well-coached football team with the additions they've made to ensure sustained success. You have to mention the Colts as a team, despite some of their questions, as a squad that could represent the AFC in Glendale, Arizona. And also want to give a huge shout-out to Colt Fan Forms for always showing football game plan support.